Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Simon Rose of SaveOurSavers.co.uk. Simon, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Thank you very much, Max. All right, well, we have to talk about this uh, Martin Wolf piece in the Financial Times where he discusses uh, cautious savers no longer serve a useful economic purpose. I, I was kind of struck by how clueless Martin Wolf is in terms of, first of all, how capitalism works. Uh, apparently, he, <laughs> he doesn't understand that without capital, there is no capitalism. Then exactly. without savers, there's no capital. Yes. Uh, without giving them a rate of interest to save, then there's no, there's no reason to save. So um, you, I'm sure you were struck by this article. <laughs> struck, yeah, yeah, like a, a wet fish around the, the gills. He's, you know, the FT's star um, columnist. It's not that dissimilar, if you remember, to what uh, Danny Blanchfry said on your own program. Ex-MPC member saying, oh, we always get letters complaining from savers about the interest rate. Oh, they should just stop whinging. Anybody with a brain would have known that what a result of QE and low interest rates was going to be. The stock market was going to be soaring, so they should put their money in there instead. Well, the whole point about cash saving for most of these people is they want to save for a purpose and they want it to be risk-free. So either they want to save up for a house, where, of course, the price always gets further and further away from them, or they want to save up for their retirement, or they want to save up for something else. But basically, they do not want to be investing their money in the stock market. But he also fails to understand what savings get used for. Now, he says, overcautious savers no longer serve a useful economic purpose. If overnight, the 1.1 trillion pounds of cash savings in the UK was taken out and put under the mattress, he would then understand, I think, what use there was for savings in the economy. It's extraordinary that this man, as you say, he doesn't seem to understand capitalism, nor seemingly to many of our central bankers. Um, uh, yesterday, the inflation report, when Mark Carney um, talked about the economy, he said, oh, there's been a sharp fall in the savings rate from a very precautionary level, i.e. 8%, to much more reasonable levels. Well, his reasonable level is that we're saving 5% of everything, which is probably the lowest in the world anyway. And that is going down on both the Bank of England's forecasts and the Office for Budget Responsibility, the independent Office for Budget Responsibility, to about 3%. Well, I mean, that's absolutely appalling, which presumably is why they're going to fiddle the figures later in the year to make it seem rather more. Well, at the same time, they're, they're worried about capital requirements on banks, that banks don't have enough capital. They're, they, uh, you know, the, the banks are maintaining, they stay 2%, 3%, uh, re retain uh, as capital, base capital, which, of course, that's not even approaching 2% because of the way that they calculate their reserves are highly mm -hmm. you know, dodgy. Yeah. So um, without savings, that's where the capital is for banks, yeah. is a savings. So they're saying, we want higher capital in banks, but we don't want people to save. Yeah. Uh, so that, where does that money come from? It comes from, uh, you know, as Steve Keen would describe it, endogenously created loans from other central banks to be on deposit on other banks, which are in fact collateralized by other loans. Yeah. So it's one big daisy chain of fraud. I, I think it's breathtaking, breathtaking really, um, um, uh, Martin Wolf's mendacity, I guess you could say. And this is clearly in this phrase here in his FT, chronic de uh, deficiency of global aggregate demand. Yeah. So his his uh, here's a here's a, a child of escaped fa from fascism, saying basically putting a gun to people's heads and saying consume yeah. at the point of a gun. Is he saying that? In other words, you don't have the option to save. You don't have the option of financial sovereignty. You don't have the option of financial independence. You need to spend your way into debt at the point of a gun, and that's the message. And this is remarkable. If you look at this guy's background, you know here's his Wikipedia page. You know, his family escaped fascists in Germany, uh, you know, and here he is proposing to be, here he is espousing a well, philosophy okay. of financial he's fascism. An, What's he's an next, arch, Martin? He's a, you know, the, the, the death chambers? I mean, he's, it's disgusting. He's an arch Keynesian. He's, he's a member of a cargo cult. They cannot see the fallacy that lies behind every single thing they utter. If the government's just borrow more, if we just spend more, somehow we will get out of this mess. Well, the problem is that what we're doing is borrowing more to get even further into this mess. In the early part of the 20th century, until the crisis, in the UK, we believed we had fantastic growth, but for every one pound of economic growth we had, we had nine pounds more of debt. Well, we haven't really rolled back the debt since the crisis. Our UK government is borrowing it's currently in debt to the tune of £1.3 trillion, pounds, almost the same as our GNP. We're borrowing another £100 billion every year. Household debt is a new high. As you say, the banks, we don't even know what debt 
debt the banks have, because we just don't know what those. And any attempt to make the banks more solid since the crisis, but here in the States, what's happened? Well, the banks have just lobbied and said, oh, no, no, we can't do this. We can't. So the banks are no more solvent than they were well, before the crisis. No, they're and we now have lower savings. They're going to renationalize they're going to nationalize RBS completely now. That's the rumor yeah, on yeah. the street, because yeah. it's insolvent, because they, they have no capital. Well, you know, at least I give credit to The Economist magazine, because they came out with a piece shortly thereafter, after Martin. Yeah. Uh, they basically made fun of him in their piece, which came out. I mean, that was just kind of funny. They said that you know, Martin Wolf's basically a clown. You know, the, you don't listen to him. He's an, he's an idiot. Uh, this was came out on May 7th. And uh, it almost reads as parody. At least the, the Economist was not fooled by this. He might, he, he's obviously uh, got a problem. But let's the, the problem, though, is, yeah, you and I think he's foolish. Many of the people who've written about the piece afterwards think he's foolish. Many of the people commenting under the piece think he's foolish. But that is the orthodoxy. I bet Mark Carney looking at that will think, yeah, that's all very sensible. But orthodoxy is not compatible with uh, financial uh, free markets uh, no. and, and, and capitalism. No. They're, they're guided by, uh, not by a central command and control orthodoxy by fascists. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem is that these guys don't trust markets. They don't yep. trust capitalism. They want to stick yep. their big, stupid uh, Bilderberg growing uh, you know, uh, fingers into yeah. the pie but they and, and, and profit yeah. by being intermediaries they and trolls. They operate on a whack the mole policy. This guy should get a real job. It. Every time they hit a mole, and, another and, and one pops up Get a real else. job, buddy. Yeah. Get a real job for a living. Go sell fish somewhere in a warp and do something yeah. productive instead of spreading lies because you're just making, you know, your, Brit your fellow British people look like freaking But the real worry, of course, is then people think, oh, this capitalism isn't working. We don't have proper capitalism. We have cro some sort of crony capitalism. That's right. And Martin Wolf is the chief crony. And I mean, big, it's big disgusting. Banks can it's control sad. everything. Well, let's move on. I mean, there's a there's a room in hell waiting for Martin Wolf. So yeah. I mean, he'll, you know, the sooner he gets there, the better. All right. So the bank. Uh, let's talk about the uh, Chancellor uh, George Osborne 2014 budget. He says they're for makers, doers, and savers. Yes. Now, how is this possible? If Mark Carney says interest rates will stay long. You know, for a how do you save? Again, it's a total duplicity, total lie, total ridiculousness. Yeah, but he got him a lot of good publicity. There was one good thing in it that we've been campaigning for ages. That uh, essentially people who really have not got much money um, formally had to pay, could pay a 10% rate on savings. So complicated that nobody actually qualified. He's taken about two and a half, maybe three million people will actually benefit at the very low end, which I approve of immensely. But the big change, of course, was to pensions, was to the idea that you can be freer about the way you treat your pension, which sounds a really wonderful idea, and I'm all in favour of giving people uh, more autonomy over what happens with their pension fund and their savings. The problem is what they believe is going to be the result of that. Now, he talked about how that was all fair and right and proper, but again, when you look at the figures, we're currently saving about 5%, and they are expecting savings to go down. What they're expecting is people to go out and spend this money which they're perfectly entitled to do, but they're actually gambling on that happening. They believe that's going to happen, and as a result, uh, the economy will look that much healthier. All he's really wanted to do is get through the next general election in about 12 months' time, if he gets back in. That's all he seems to be caring about. So let's get people spending more, getting more into debt. We don't really care. Let's uh, push up house prices. We don't really care. Let's get people more into debt. We'll try and sort it out later. It, it's piñata economics. So whether it's the Royal Mail, yeah. I mean, Vince Cable oversaw the uh, Lazard Frere, mm -hmm. whack eight million pounds of fees, you know, mm -hmm. from the yeah, British. Yeah. Then the NHS, they're whacking it to death, it's take, taking all the equity out of there. And then pensions account. Pensions account, there's a lot of money in there that the city of London would love to get their greasy hands yeah. on to destroy. I mean, here you have a, a group of folks in the city that have been caught stealing dozens and dozens of times. Every single one of the big four banks caught in innumerable yep. market rigging, larceny, extortion, forgery, again and again and again. So they say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our country's pension accounts, which are ring-fenced to some degree to give people a way not to go bust when they retire. We're going to give it to you in a silver platter so you can rape, maraud, pillage with impunity some more. So again, these poor British people, they're going to end up in the workhouse. Remember yeah. the workhouses here in Britain, this wasn't too long ago. 
Uh, and they're going to end up back in these freaking workhouses sewing buttons onto the uniforms of these neo-fascists like Martin Wolf. Yeah, they'll call them retirement villages, I think is a wonderful <laughs> way of making it sound as though that's what people really want. I mean, going back to the Wolf piece, of course, what he talks about is Keynes, the idea of the euthanasia, euthanasia of the rentier. Yeah. Not, not allowing these people who make but money he's from the nothing. Rentier. Well, he's, he's the rentier! He's the rentier! That's the problem. It's not savers now who are the rentiers. It's the people who've benefited from QE and all this money for nothing. The people who have the assets whose prices have been pushed beyond their wildest streams without doing anything for it. Yeah, it's uh, we've five years of the uh, expansion, hundreds of billions of pounds printed to keep these insolvent banks from declaring bankruptcy as they would have under a capitalist system, uh, and which has expanded the rentier class. You've got the biggest rentier class problem in Britain in 150 years. Yeah. You've got these uh, poor, poor folks that are monopolizing um, the, the economy in ways that are just creating shameless uh, bread lines, soup lines, austerity measures collapse across the country, and they don't, <clears throat> they've got the propaganda behind it. They yeah. seem shameless in this We're way. Gonna, yeah, so we talk a lot about um, fixing and fiddling numbers. So later this year, the numbers are going to be changed so that the savings ratio in this country will suddenly miraculously go up by between three and six percentage points. They think that will then reflect everything more. But in fact, you know, if you talk about the majority of people, I think 20% uh, of Britons have no savings whatsoever. 35% have less than £500. We are not prepared for another financial crisis. Maybe it will never, ever happen, but you and I know it's just around the corner. We don't know which corner it is. And in the meantime, Britain, which used to actually cope with its uh, trade deficit because we had a great invisible trade uh, surplus, well, that's gone. We don't make money on invisible trade anymore. We have a current account deficit. So we're borrowing more money all the time. We're now spending on interest each year at these rates, the same as our education budget. We've got a massive current account deficit. We cannot pay our way anymore. In fact, you could say that it's not just that we aren't saving. We almost can't afford to save anymore because almost everything is going to prop up the, the economy at the moment. And they claim we now have a really vibrant economy that's just about to go off into sustained yeah, well, that's growth. That's the way fascism works. It's Once you identify a scapegoat, in this case, poor people, yep. and you can't. when you start getting rid of them, you can't stop. And uh, there's not much more to add to this other than to say thanks so much for once again being on the Kaiser Report. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest, Simon Rose. If you'd like to get in touch, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.